Uh, hello, everyone. So today's uh, topic is about fertilizer. Um, my name is uh, uh, Zohir Choudhury, and um, let's get into it. So fertilizers are essentially any materials of natural or synthetic origin that is applied to soil or to plant tissues to supply plant with their needed nutrients. Um, most of the fertilizers that are commonly used in agriculture, they contain three uh, macronutrients, we call them three basic nutrients that plant need, they're nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Beside these nutrients, which are macronutrients, um, plants also need uh, micronutrients, and many of these micronutrients, uh, they are critical to plant um, functioning, uh, such as production of enzymes and many other things. Um, and some of these are zinc, um, uh, to, to name one, iron is another one, molybdenum is another one, for example. In here, you can see uh, to your uh, right, a chemical uh, fertilizer, fertilizer production industry and some chemical fertilizer pellets. Um, there are two main types of fertilizers. One is uh, synthetic or inorganic fertilizer. Uh, and then uh, um, the other is organic fertilizer. The inorganic fertilizer can also be called as chemical fertilizers. So these inorganic or synthetic fertilizers and man-made fertilizers um, that can be formulated for various speeds of release and increase yield in agriculture by providing the macronutrients, which are nitrogen, uh, uh, potassium, and phosphorus. Um, and these are needed for plant growth. Example of synthetic or inorganic fertilizers are urea, ammonium, nit ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, ammonium phosphate, as well as ammonium chloride. On the other hand, organic fertilizers are derived organically from animal or plant matters. And uh, uh, examples are manure, slurry, worm castings, peat, seaweed, humic acid, and guano, uh, to name a few. These are enriched with, the with both macronutrients and micronutrients that plant need. Uh, and as explained in the, uh, uh, in the slide in here, you can see the difference between applying chemical fertilizers, which um, predominantly targets plant nutrients, uh, provides plant with nutrients. Well, on the other hand, organic fertilizers not only provides plants with the needed nu nutrients, but also enriches the soil with critical organic matter, which uh, uh, um, is essential for soil health. And uh, if the soil is healthy, there'll be microorganism and through those microorganisms, plant can also absorb the nutrients properly for, uh, for proper growth. Um, so that's the difference between chemical and organic fertilizers. In here, you can see um, uh, three macronutrients, NPK. And so uh, NPK stands for N nitrogen, P phosphorus, K potassium. Um, nitrogen N is the leaf maker. Uh, it helps in the production of new cells, enzymes, and green pigments. It is also responsible for leaf and stem growth and helps plants with rapid growth. On the other hand, uh, phosphorus P uh, is the root maker and flower inducer. Uh, it encourages root growth and blooming. It is, a, it is an essential part of the process of photosynthesis, and it is involved in the formation of all oils, sugars, and starches. It also helps with the transformation of solar energy into chemical energy. Finally, potassium K is the flower inducer and fruit maker. It encourages uptake of water. Uh, it is essential in the development of flowers and fruits and increases plants resistance to diseases. It also helps plant, uh, plants make better use of light and air. So when you, get, when you get a bag of fertilizer, you see these three numbers. What are those three numbers? Um, so 
in describing the contents of a bag of fertilizer, each symbol will be replaced by a number such as, for example, 10, 10, 10, or in this case, in this bag, 18, 24, and six. The first number is the nitrogen number, the second number is the phosphorus number, and the last number is the potassium number. So N for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, K for potassium, and PK. Um, and, and that's what this means. So what this means in here is that 80% of the bag's weight is made up of nitrogen, 24% of the weight is phosphorus, and 6% of the weight is potassium. In total, if you add this up, I believe it is 48%. So 48% of the bag's weight comes from these three main ingredients, which are known in this, which we know we just um, talked about, that they are macronutrients. The rest, which is 52%, is essentially filler and other minor elements. This filler, uh, they typically are um, not uptaken by the plants and they don't affect plant in any manner. Uh, on the other hand, micronutrients are consumed in smaller quantities and are required for enzymes uh, essential to the plant's metabolism. So they help with the buildup of the enzymes. Here you can say, you can see some of the main macronutrients beside nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. There's also carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. On the other hand, uh, some of the critical micronutrients are chlorine, boron, copper, iron, manganese, molybdenum, zinc, nickel, to name uh, a few of them. So uh, organic fertilizer, one example would be composting. And uh, composting is essentially the controlled decomposition of organic materials, such as leaves, grass, wood scraps by microorganisms. So microorganisms decompose uh, leaves, grass, and food uh, scraps into uh, products that can be recycled into the into the soil and be uptaken by the plants. Um, so compost is a useful material that resemble that resembles soils and can be used in gardening. Uh, and in here you can see uh, organic fertilizers, uh, how it can enrich the soil by providing soil with soil nutrition, which in turn gives plant its nutrition. Um, five of the best organic fertilizers are shown in here. Uh, so um, um, humus, um, then molasses, kelp, sea minerals, fish are some of the uh, important um, organic fertilizers. So what are the environmental effects of fertilizers? So according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or IPCC, Production of fertilizers and associated land use practices are key drivers of global warming. Greenhouse gases are produced during the manufacture of nitrogen fertilizer. In addition, nitrogen fertilizer, once in the soil, can be converted to nitrous oxide, a potent greenhouse gas, by soil bacteria. Chemical fertilizer can degrade soil microbiome um, and lead to accumulation of toxins in the ecosystems. Chemical fertilizers eventually deplete soil of organic matter, reducing their ability to hold water and making them subject to erosion. Um, excess fertilizer applied to crops and fields, which happen, happen very often, uh, leads to soil erosion. Um, uh, well, excess fertilizer once applied to fields and crops, including soil erosion, make agriculture not the largest source of nitrogen and phosphorus pollution in the country. Once a fraction of the nitrogen-based fertilizers is converted to plant matter. So only a fraction, I mean, only a fraction of uh, the nitrogen-based fertilizers are converted to plant matter. The rest gets through the runoff or goes into the soil, absorbed into the soil and eventually into the groundwater. The remainder uh, accumulates uh, uh, in the soil and is transformed into nitrate, which is highly water soluble. And uh, so when there's rainfall, the water soluble nitrates from the fertilizer goes into the water runoff and eventually uh, pollutes oceans, rivers, and lakes. Um, and uh, uh, this leads to 
uh, leaching of the fertilizer into the into the nearby waterways, leading to groundwater pollution, beside uh, pollution of other waterways. Because of excess fertilizer usage and runoff, uh, we see um, uh, that um, dead zones, as, sh as, as shown in this in, the, in this graph. So chemicals that are not uptaken by plants leach through the soil and into our groundwater, contaminating streams, lakes, and oceans, as mentioned above uh, uh, previously, as well as our drinking water system uh, by contaminating the groundwater. Nitrogen and phosphorus-based fertilizers cause eutrophication uh, in water bodies, which is essentially algae growing and uh, taking up the nutrients from the water because of this excess nutrients and, then, and can lead to uh, like growth of algae like in here or uh, blooms of algae as shown in here. Um, so because uh, this algae overtake the water, they take up, they take up, um, uh, they take up the oxygen from the water. And as a result, there's a lack of oxygen, uh, which leads to dead zones in places where uh, excess nutrients gets run off. So those excess nutrients leads to the growth of algae uh, and they overcompete with the local uh, fish for the needs of uh, um, uh, oxygen and other um, organisms in the water. And that's why you get uh, dead zones in, 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 in different parts of the globe. So thank you for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, uh, this, this lecture and uh, uh, we'll see you next time.